Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So in today's video, we're going to be doing an absolute beginner's guide into setting up Betaflight on your brand new built quadcopter. Now I will be covering everything into detail and also explaining what everything does and also how to, you know, set up iBus, SBus, Spectrum, TBS, uh, Unify or, you know, Smart Audio or the Trap Protocol. I'm going to be showing you every single thing you will need in order to get it flying and also the motors, making sure your flight controller is correct. And if you have an offset, how to set the offset. So we're going to be covering this in detail and as well as safety tips that you might not have known about. So with that being said, the first step and the most important two steps is make sure your propellers are off. That's one thing. Also, your video transmitter antenna is on. Even though it's not going to be powered on on the 5 volt USB here once we plug it in, some video transmitters do power up on 5 volt. So keep that in mind. And also, once we get into the step where we have to check the motor, if it's spinning in the correct direction, then you might have, you know, already forgotten that, you know, you don't have your video transmitter on. You plug in the battery while you're doing all that. Your video transmitter can either burn itself and also it'll definitely start degrading, which means its distance will get shorter and shorter as it degrades the components on your video transmitter. And nobody really wants that. So try to keep your video transmitter's antenna always on so let's plug in the usb and hop into the beta flight configurator all right guys so the first step before plugging in your usb is have the quad face away from you this is actually very important and i'll, I'll explain why so right now it's facing towards you guys and i'm going to go ahead and plug in my usb here and then i'm just going to set it down on the table and this will all start making sense why i'm doing it like this Next thing you want to do is look up here. Now, mine is COM74. I also have another COM port, which I don't know for what. But if you don't know which one, what you can do is go to COM1, press connect. If it doesn't connect, press on connect again. Go down to COM, the second one you might have, connect, and you should go in. However, if you plug it in and these COM ports do not show up, then we have the drivers right here. You could download the STM USB VCP drivers. And after you do that and install, it's just going to be next, 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 next. Reboot your PC and connect it. If it still doesn't work, then you want to use this program down here. You click on this, it'll open actually, it'll open the link for you. You can click on these names. And with the bottom program here, you'd have to do a little bit of just Googling on this, like flight controller, that name of the program right there, not connecting in beta flight, and you'll probably find a bunch of results. I'm pretty sure you'll find a bunch of uh, solutions. They'll all show you the same thing. So with that being said, let's go into the beta flight configurator. So the reason why I told you to connect it facing away from you is so just in case you messed up and you had the arrow tilted a different way, we can actually see if the quadcopter's flight controller is in the correct orientation. So if I turn it to the right, yes, the quadcopter turns to the right and that turns to the left. And that arrow should simulate the where the camera is. And that's exactly what's happening on mine. Hopefully it's not inverted like on my camera, but it's exactly what my quadcopter is doing. I'm going to the right, I'm yawing, and that's perfect. That's what we want here. So that means we have set the flight controller in the correct orientation in the quadcopter because they all have arrows, some more visible than others, some are not. So if you don't have that correct, then you're going to want to uh, fix that right now. There's also other ways to change it, which I'll show you. If you can't flip it because it doesn't fit, I'll also show you that. But this is the first and most important step right now. Next thing we want to do is we want to go down to the ports tab. Now, the ports tab is very important. This is what activates your receivers, your video transmitter's connection, because you'll be able to also control your video transmitter uh, through the on-screen display if you want it. And this is where you would activate it. And you can do other things also, like add GPS, ESC telemetry, and all of these things. Now, if you take a closer look here on the identifier, uh, columns, what you would see is you'd see you are forget the US VCP never touch that that is activated. So we're able to communicate with it via USB. So don't touch this. What you want to start with you are one and go down to whatever you are you have you could have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like mine or even more. So here we have UART1. Now, what does UART1 mean? Now, what I want you to think of the UARTs are basically USB ports on the flight controller. That's what they are, basically. So UART1 is basically the R1 and T1 pads on your flight controller. They can also be called RX1 and TX1. 
there's two paths for each UART. Not always, they're always visible, two of them for each number, but that is what the number represents here. The R1 pad and the T1 pad right here. Now UART2 would also be R2 and T2. And then uh, UART3 is R3 and T3. So you get the idea here. Now you might be like, what does the R mean? Well, the R means receive data. So if you want your quadcopter to receive data from a sensor, you'd want to put it on an R. Now, if you want your flight controller, your quadcopter to send some data, then you're going to want to put it on a T because the flight controller's T means it'll transmit. So that's what the R and the T stand for. So keep that in mind. All right. So now let's go ahead and start with the first thing, which is the most important thing, your receiver that's going to be controlling the quadcopter. Now it's very important to know where it has been connected and they always go on R pad very important because it's a receiving pad because you're going to be telling the controller to tell the quadcopter what to do so the quadcopter will be receiving that information so it's always an r pad now there's a place where that might confuse a lot of people which is f4 flight controllers and f7 flight controllers this is plays a really big role into getting your receiver connected correctly and why is that now if you're using fr sky and you're using an F7, then you can connect it to any R pad. Now, if you're using the FR Sky S bus protocol on an F4, then it has to go to a specific pad. And usually the flight controller will tell you, oh, this is the S bus pad, and that's where you'd put it. However, you won't know which UART it's on because it's also on one of these UARTs. You have to go to the documentation, it'll tell you S bus is RX2. So that would be UART2. So let's go ahead and check this one out. Now, what you want to do, for example, on my quadcopter, and now if you've missed the previous video, I built this into great detail, showing you and explaining where everything connects and where I've connected my S bus wire, which is my FR Sky signal for my receiver, was on R6. So what would I have to do here? Well, first of all, we need to find UART6. So here's UART6 right here. We want to make sure this is disabled. We want to make sure the serial RX is enabled and then everything else disabled. You can see disabled here, disabled here, disabled here and save and reboot. Now, the next thing you want to look for is if your video transmitter has something called smart audio or the tramp protocol. What that allows you to do is change your uh, video transmitters output power and also channel through the on-screen display. Now the on-screen display you can access while the quadcopter is not flying and you can do these modifications which is a really nice feature and where this connects it connects quite differently whether it's the tramp uh, protocol or the smart audio protocol most like 90 percent of all video transmitters are running the smart audio protocol. So where you'd want to connect that, you might think, oh, I'm going to connect it on a R pad, but you're wrong. You have to connect that on a T pad. So for example, on my video, when I built this one, I connected my smart audio on T1. So that would be considered UART1. So there's also something very important to take note of here. You cannot use one UART for two things. What do I mean by that? You know how each UART has a receive and a transmit pad, an RX pad and a TX pad? Well, for example, here we just set up our receiver on UART 6 and we use the R pad, but we still have the T6 pad available and we said smart audio connects on a T pad. We can't use it like that. So keep that in mind. Every single thing needs to go on a different UART because once we connect our receiver, that USB is taken. Just imagine once you put a wire, and you enabled something, that USB port is taken. Keep that in mind, that's very important. So back to the smart audio. I've set mine up on T1. It's very important, these go on a T's. So mine's on T1, so what do I do? I would make sure this is disabled. See, so UART1, which is T1. This is disabled, this is disabled, again, disabled, until I go to peripherals. And right here, you could find smart audio or the IRC tramp protocol. On your video transmitter, it'll tell you what it's using. Some use them, some don't use them. You can still use the buttons if you don't want to set this up. So you're totally fine in that perspective and you should be good to go. Now, mine's using the TBS Smart Audio. So I would just go ahead and select that and everything else is disabled because I'm not using anything else here. And I would save and reboot. Now the save and reboot is very, very important. So 
then we go ahead and reconnect now we just finished the ports tab i really hope this helped a lot of people and if it has let me know down in the comment section because that also helps the video next thing we have is the configuration tab now this is a very very important tab this is where most of everything else that's left to do that can get your quad up and running now first thing you want to make sure you're on quad x hopefully you have a quad x this is the type of tutorial we're doing right now now the next thing you want to do is go to the esc motor features here choose either d shot 600 or d shot 1200 stick to those two but they won't always work let me explain why if you're using a bl heli 32 esc then you can choose any d shot here up to 1200 you could use that it's the best it's the fastest but it's not going to make any difference in your flight performance next thing if you're using a bl heli s esc then you want to choose d shot 600 you can't choose d shot 1200 so that's what you'd want to do mine currently is a bl heli 32 so i'm going to use d shot 1200 so next down here we have the motor stop now if you wanted the motors not to spin when you arm it then you would have to set it like this but if you want them to spin when you arm the quad or when you start the quad then you want to keep that off and here is the motor idle throttle value this is in percentage leave that default that's going to be perfect i usually leave that default so just leave that so when you arm it it's going to be spinning at 2.5 percent throttle so that's perfect you don't want that 50 because as soon as you arm it it's just going to go to the moon and it's going to be very bad so you want to keep that very low now we go to system configuration here now here it could help you if you're running into some issues before you start tuning um, what you can do sometimes is let me explain what this actually does. So this is the update frequency F Consider it as the resolution you're receiving of what's going on with the quadcopter and the lower the resolution you get if there's a lot of noise and disgusting things coming in then that would lower the resolution and make the problems a bit less which is a little bit better for you starting out so if you run into any issues come here and drop it to 4k and you could put 4k 4k but this is usually a default will get you going good but before you start pid tuning drop that a little bit before you get too advanced into pid tuning that kind of helps but at the end of the day once you get really good at it you want to maximize this so you can tune it to its overall best performance but you're going to be fine i fly some quads on 4k 4k i'm fine with that so keep that in mind here i'm actually going to put this 8k 2k like you and just keep these on don't play with them if there is no barometer it doesn't matter if there is a barometer it's really nice it gives you the altitude but it's not really important especially when you're doing the fpv stuff that we're doing now the board and sensor alignment now this is very important if you cannot fit your flight controller in the way that it's supposed to be mounted into the quadcopter because some flight controls will have uh, one side wider than the other and in your frame for some reason you could only fit it off to the right just like this So let me explain this to you here more than likely We're just using the yaw degrees and the yaw is this axis That's exactly how we've placed our flight controller and how do you know how many degrees? Well, this is how it is. So in a circle, there's 360 uh, degrees and there's only four ways that the board can be placed, whether it's like this, like this, like this, like this, because it's the square. What you'd want to do is divide four by 360, we get 90 degrees. So if you moved it to the right, because it goes clockwise. So if we move the board once to the right, so the air on the flight controller is pointing to the right, that's 90. And if we move it to the back, you add another 90 to that 90, so that's 180. And then if you move it to the left, then that would be another 90, which is, I think, 270, but calculated just in case. And then if you move it back to the front, it's 360, but they call it zero. So keep that in mind. You want to play with the yaw here. Leave these off. I mean, leave these the way they are. Don't play with these. Accelerator trim, accelerometer trim, you don't really need. You don't need that. Um, arming angle. This is very important. Now, uh, this is the maximum arming angle. So this is kind of a safety feature. So if your quad, you know, you're holding your quadcopter like this and you accidentally armed it, it's not going to arm. But if you increase the degrees, so right now we have a play of 25 degrees. And this is very useful. For example, you don't have, you know, you're sitting on your battery and the quadcopter is leaning slightly forward like this. Uh, you'll be able to arm it. However, also, 
sometimes people won't be able to arm if they have their quadcopter, you know, just on the floor like this. It'll, it'll never arm if that's set to 25 degrees. So keep that in mind. Always, when you first go to arm your quadcopter, make sure you get it as flat as possible. And uh, that's one thing you got out of the way why it's not arming if you ever run into that issue. Uh, so make sure you check this. Later on, you can set this to whatever you want, but I highly recommend keep it at 25. This can be useful sometimes if you get stuck in a tree where you can arm it at any angle. And um, yeah, just yeah, I just recommend you keep it at 25, especially if you're starting out. Later on, you can figure out yourself what you need in that perspective, but 25 is fine. Craft name, you could put you know your quadcopter's name here. Uh, for example, I'm going to call this the Hollybro build. This is the latest Hollybro build here. And again, it's my latest video. Uh, camera, don't even touch that. You don't need to touch that at all. Now, this is very important, the receiver. Now, even if you have the receiver connected in the correct place, it won't run if you don't tell it what kind of receiver it is because this is where we do that. So here we have PPM. Not a lot of flight controllers use PPM. What you really want to concentrate on is serial-based receivers. And once you click that, if, oh, let me just show you something. When, when it's like this, you won't see anything. So you want to go to serial based receivers and here you can choose everything you need, whether FR Sky F port, Crossfire, IBUS, Spectrum and S bus. Right now, this is an FR Sky S bus and that's what I would set up right here. And if I were using IBUS, I would go to IBUS. And again, IBUS would connect to any R pad, but on F4 flight controller, do not connect it to the S bus pad. Be careful. So IBUS goes on any R pad, whether it's an F4 or an F7. However, and again, we're using S bus, and S bus will work anywhere on R pad on an F7 because this is an F7 flight controller. RSSI signal, we don't really need to get into that. That's some more advanced topics we could cover. 3D ESC, keep that off. GPS, you could turn it on if you know what you're doing. But right now, we're not getting into that part of the toy. Right now, I just want to get you in the air. I like how most pilots fly. So other features is also very, very important here. Now, right now, we don't need any of these. Uh, telemetry, we have ESC telemetry. Uh, keep that checked if you know what you're doing. And I'll cover ESC telemetry in a more advanced video. LED strip, I don't have any LEDs on this. OLED screen, nobody really puts that. That was like when it first came out, people were doing that. Channel forwarding, don't need that. Transponder, you don't need that. Air mode is really important. Now, air mode, what does air mode do here? This will permanently enable air mode. So for example, you're flying and uh, you let go of the throttle. If you let go of the throttle, it's gonna go to that 2.5% that we set in the beginning. So you drop the throttle down. It'll just start you know, falling like this. If your quadcopter ever does that, that's because air mode is not on. So what air mode does is it allows the motor to keep correcting itself even at zero throttle. So it can allow the motors to increase to however much uh, they need to be in order to keep the quadcopter stable like this, falling down like that. So that's why you'd want to enable air mode. Keep that in mind, and I highly recommend you always enable air mode. Now, OSD, make sure that's on because that's your on-screen display. Uh, ESC sensor, uh, we'll, we'll get into that in a later uh, day also. Anti-gravity, keep those on. You could turn them off. It's up to you. I keep them on. So again, this is much more advanced, but keep them on. You'll be better in that perspective. All this stuff down here doesn't really matter right now. It's just uh, to have the beeper configuration if you want it to beep when the RX is lost and just these types of things, it's just beeper configuration here. So once we have everything set up here, then we want to go ahead and click save and reboot again. It's very important that we click save and reboot. All right, guys. So right now, after we save and reboot, we have a power and battery tab. Now, I don't think I'm going to get too far into this right now. This is basically what's going to be giving you the battery voltage in your goggles on screen display. And it's very good to monitor your battery while you're flying. So you know when to land so you don't ruin it or it doesn't fall somewhere super far away from you. Usually the default settings will get you going. And uh, most of the time, if not, some companies tell you what to do here. But we're going to keep that for a later video. So I prepare a couple flight controllers around me and explain this into more detail. But right now, this will get, usually just get you going and it's not going to affect your flying that much. Next, we have the PID tuning. Now, the PID tuning, we're not getting into PID tuning because we're not flying just yet. And here, especially if you're new, just leave these default. Don't touch these right now. Leave these for a later day. Right now, just get your quad, make sure it's flying. So we're gonna leave these alone and definitely don't play with filters. Don't turn any of the filters off. It's very dangerous and you could hurt yourself, you can burn something. Just don't do that until you're ready for it. At least have a feel for your quadcopter before you actually attempt to do any of the filters. Usually just PID tuning will get you going. 
So keep that in mind. That's very important here. Now, receiver. This is very important because now we can see if our receiver is actually working from the configuration and the way that we've connected it. So before you go here, you need to do a couple things. One, you need to make sure you have bound your receiver to the transmitter here. Now, if you don't know how to know this, well, it's very simple. Hopefully you've tried binding it. Um, the way to know if it's actually bound is keep your transmitter off and turn on the quadcopter with a battery. And if the receiver is, let's just say red, theoretically, it's just red flashing or something. And then when you turn on the transmitter, uh, the receiver went green. That means it's bound. That means you are connected and we should see something here. If we didn't see anything moving here, then there's a possible issue of where you've connected your receiver or enabled the wrong UART. So keep that in mind. So right now, I'm going to plug in the battery into my quadcopter. Also, make sure the propellers are off and the video transmitter's antenna is connected. And I'm going to go ahead and plug in my quadcopter here. Actually, this is the first time I plugged it in. So, and I'm going to go ahead and turn on my transmitter here. And hopefully, we should see that start to move. Welcome oh, to Earth okay. TX. Engine off. All right. So now I see I have input. So when I move, I see everything Pro moving and everything is working. Off. However, there's a little problem down here. So if you see this right now, the quadcopter is going crazy. And why is that? It's saying my throttle's at 50%, but my throttle's at zero. And if I move my throttle, I just see my roll moving. This is also another reason why your quadcopter would not arm. Right now, you have to take a look at the channel map here. Uh, usually, you know, back then, FR Sky meant something different. Now, this is FR Sky. I'm pressing FR Sky and clicking save, but still, the quadcopter down here is still spinning and all of these are wrong. But what I have to do is, if that's happening to you, you'd have to go to Spectrum for some reason because it's T A E R. Now, when you click it, it's still spinning until you save. The save is all the way on the bottom right. So I'm going to save. Look how it stopped. And if we come back up here and we do our throttle, so here's our throttle. You can see the throttle is moving. And if we yaw, we see that the yaw is moving. Pitch, pitch is moving. Roll, roll is moving. This is perfect. We're not going to need to do anything else here. And that is set and done. We saved it. Everything is working. So the next thing you want to do is the modes tab. So this is what tells the quadcopter to arm. Uh, what mode to be on. I'll also explain the modes for you and some things to possibly enable to make your life a little bit easier. If your quad flips upside down very far away, you can flip it back and fly. Hopefully if you get it right. I'm not going to cover how to uh, enable the auxiliary channels on your transmitter. You're going to have to do some searching on that. I do have an older video on that, which should help a lot of people if you've seen it. But um, I'm not going to show you how to enable it in this video on the transmitter, but I'll show you how to set it up here. And what you want to do next is, for example, we need arming. So arming is the thing that starts the quadcopter. It's like turning the ignition here. And what you can do, for example, you set this on something, but you don't know what you set it on. And I want this one to arm my quadcopter. So what I would do is I can go to auto right there and then flip Pro the switch. Off. And you can see it flipped all the way here. Engine and off. that's off. And make sure this is all the way towards the end. That means when this line goes all the way here, that means it's going to arm. So the next thing I want is to set up my mode, which is whether it be angle, horizon, or acro. Now, what do those mean? Angle mode will not allow the quadcopter to tilt more than a, a couple degrees. It'll not allow it to flip no matter how hard you deflect the roll or pitch or whatever axis. It will not allow you to flip. So that is angle mode. So if you wanted angle mode, then we would say add link. Sorry, not add link. We would say add range. And then we can say auto, keep it on auto. And now I want it to be this one right here because I have the auxiliary Slide set up. Mode, and as Slide you can mode, tell, and as you can tell, it's auxiliary too. And it set that up for me. However, I want it to start on angle mode when I first boot up the quadcopter. And this is the default position on my RC transmitter. So I would set that in the beginning here. Now, you might be like, why would you need angle if you're going to be flying acro? Well, I use angle sometimes. For example, when you're flying and there's a bee around you and you're flying acro and you're trying to get it away from you, you're definitely going to crash, break it or lose your quadcopter. So what I do when I feel like a bee or a bug is around me, I would quickly enable it in angle mode, give it some throttle, not too much. 
and, you know, resituate myself and then pop back the goggles or whatever and carry on. And this is why it's very important. I, I personally always keep angle mode on. Horizon, I never use Horizon. I don't know who would. But um, it's, it's, it's somewhat kind of dangerous because if you think you're in angle mode and you're actually in horizon, it'll allow the quadcopter to completely flip. So if, for example, it was in front of you, your quadcopter went up and you pressed back all the way thinking you're in angle mode, that thing will actually flip on you. It'll just go into you and um, that could be an absolute nightmare if you hurt somebody or something. So, But Horizon is really nice if you, if you, if you want to use it to practice flipping. After you flip, if it reaches a specific threshold and you let go, it'll either continue that flip for you and it'll align itself or uh, just roll back the other way. So that's what Horizon does. And uh, it works the same way. So for example, this is a three position switch on my controller. So it can go, as you can tell, look, watch the Flight orange. Now it went to the middle right here. And Flight then now it went to the back right there. So what we can do is we can tell it on the second switch. So we'd say add range. We'll keep it on auto and we'll flip Flight it. And now what we see is the middle part here. If I have this switch on the middle, it'll be in horizon mode. And if I go back, it's going to be in angle mode. And uh, this is how you'd set up your modes here. Now, everybody flies acro, which means it's not stabilized at all. You have to keep the balance uh, in order to keep it flying. And that is achieved by not activating any mode. So, for example, on Auxiliary 2, we have the first mode being um, angle. And now, wherever we put the same switch somewhere else, it'll actually flip into acro mode automatically. So, if, Flight as you can tell, acro. the orange is in the middle now, that's already in acro mode. Flight mode acro. And that's also in acro mode. Uh, ignore my transmitter, this is the sound pack. So, this is how you would go into acro mode. So, keep that in mind. Now, down here, we have some other things also. Fail safe, you don't really need beeper if you have a beeper then if you've installed a beeper then you can set it up so for example i have i like mine on this one right here so that would set it up for me but as you can tell as i'm doing this right now it caught the correct switch but i'm never enabling it because either the orange is all the way to the left or all the way to the right and um i don't have this bar anywhere that would actually enable it but if i moved it here when I go like this, that enables my buzzer. And if you had it here, your buzzer would always be on. It would just be annoying. So that's where you'd want to set that up right there. I'm going to save. Never forget to save. It's all the way on the bottom right. Now, if we go down here, I'm not going to cover, again, all of these into great detail because um, I want to do a more advanced video later on where we go a little bit deeper and deeper every time. But these are the like main two things you need the arming make sure it's here make sure you have the correct auxiliary channel and the angle these cannot be on the same well they can be on the same switch but it's not recommended so this is how you'd set that up and it's just, it's really that simple i know it could be complicated times at times all right guys so right now we're on one of the most important parts which is the motors having them spin the correct orientation and also making sure you have them in the correct order and i'll explain what i mean in a bit so let's go into the motors tab now. So here we have this picture that says, this is the front motor one, two, three, four. Now this is very important because now we need to double check if that's correct. If that's motor one in the back right, motor two is in the front right. So I'm plugging in the battery. Again, make sure no propeller is connected because we're gonna be spinning up the motors now. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, I understand the risk. And I'm just gonna do one click on one right here so this is going to be motor one and i'm going to press the arrow key up on my keyboard just to move it slightly hopefully your motor is spinning so my motor is spinning and motor one should be the back right motor so that's correct for me that's spinning and then next what you can do is touch the motor slightly with your finger to make sure it's not spinning super fast let me show you kind of like this and on the picture it's telling me it should spin clockwise so i'm going to go like this and just barely touch the nut here, and I can see spinning my finger clockwise. So now we've confirmed that this is motor one, which is the back right motor, as you can tell, and it also is spinning in the correct direction. So that's very great. Now we're gonna do motor two, which should be the front right motor here. And I'm gonna click on this and just use my arrow key to move it up slightly, because it's all spinning slowly. There we go, it's not too fast. And that's spinning, so okay, we've confirmed that's motor two. And this one is spinning in the wrong direction. As you can tell, it's, it's spinning my finger by itself here. 
So motor two is incorrect. Now I highly recommend you get a piece of paper and write that down. So motor two here is incorrect in the orientation that it's spinning. Now we're gonna do the same thing to three and four. So here's three, and that is three. It's the back left motor here, and it's spinning counterclockwise, but motor three is spinning clockwise. So we're gonna need to change motor two and three's spinning direction. Okay, and now we have motor four. Let's go ahead and see. And it's the front left motor here, and it's spinning clockwise, which is perfect. You can see from the arrow on the picture there. So now we have all those in place to make sure everything is off. Turn this one off and also remove your battery. So we've concluded that motor two and three are spinning in the wrong direction. So what can we do? Well, I don't want to jump into BL Heli 32 and BL Heli S because they're both different uh, softwares in, in the way you access them. So the best thing that I would tell you to do and should be the easiest, hopefully, is take the two any two wires so for example we said motor two here i'm just going to unplug this so we said motor two here i would take any two of the wires connected to the esc any two doesn't matter and then just flip them flip any two and that'll flip the orientation and you'll be fine so that's what i would do to these two i would desolder two wires and flip them and i'd go to this one here desolder two wires and flip their positions and then you have all your motors spinning in the correct direction. Okay, so now you know how to check if your motors are doing everything correctly and if they are in the correct order. Now the ordering is very important. Motor one, two, three, four, and also the orientation is very important. So next thing we have is just the OSD. We're not gonna cover the black box in this video. That's much more advanced. Neither the CLI. You're not gonna need to play with the CLI any, anytime soon right now. So here's the OSD, which is the on-screen display. And this is what shows up in your goggles while you're watching your quadcopter fly. For example, you have the amperage, which is the current draw, what mode you're flying in, which is going to be very useful. I like to move these to the right. And you could actually move these to wherever you want. Uh, some goggles or screens would eat up the bottom. So you probably have to you know, move these up slightly. Uh, which is really good to have main battery voltage is very good to have. The timer is also very good to have, tells you how long you've been flying. The flight mode is also good, which is this one here. So you know if you're in horizon, angle, or acro. Uh, throttle position, you can put that. Tells you what your throttle position was uh, if you wanted that. Your VTX channel, if you have smart audio connected, this could be very useful. It tells you R band and it's on channel two and how much is your output power. So it's really great into that perspective. And you can go through these and see what else you'd want to enable. But the main thing to have here is the battery voltage. That is one of the most important things here. And um, yeah, after you do all that, don't forget to save in the bottom. So also very important. And if you remember in the configurations tab, we've also set up the name of the quadcopter. You would enable it with the craft name setting right here. So I called it Holly Bro and it actually picked it up for me, Holly Bro. So Holly Bro. So that's really nice. Really happy about that. And uh, yeah, and that's currently it here. So we're just gonna save. All right guys, and I really hope this video helped a lot of people out there. And if you still have any questions or any suggestions, let me know down in the comment section. I'll, I'll be looking at those in order to create my next video on these topics. And also, if I do help you make a purchase or avoid a purchase or help you with something, please consider joining my Patreon. That'd be super awesome. I do a ton of giveaways there. I'll probably be giving this one out very soon on the channel. This is a high premium quadcopter. So yeah, come join my Patreon to get access to a bunch of things. And also sometimes some free shirts that I design. For example, this STM32 PID loop shirt, uh, which is the equation that actually keeps our quadcopter stable in the air. So come join my Patreon and or check out my shop if you like this t-shirt and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out guys.